Welcome back to Shit They Don't Tell You. I'm Nikki Limo. What's up? It's Iceman. And today we have a very special guest, Marley Spraggs. Hi. Hi. What's up? Um, we're, I'm not going to pretend that this is the first time she came over. This okay. the second time she's been so on Just to like, let you know, like she came over last week and yes. we had a crazy malfunction. I blame Mercury Retrograde. But um, our microphones just wouldn't work. And it was like pretty annoying. Um for her mostly like we just like kind of just wasted her whole her whole afternoon no. No. and uh and we recorded 10 minutes it was just like a really juicy 10 minutes i'm kind of sad for you guys and then we made her choke on some uh really spicy hot wings and <laughs> yeah we actually hang out all night we hung out all night it was really fun yeah we just so. like we're like how many things can we do to torture this <laughs> yeah. human this and then i came back and so. then yeah. she's like you know what Crazy. come back next week yeah <laughs> yeah no, it was fun they people. were like oh these wings are really spicy and whenever someone says that i'm just like oh, okay yeah, whatever <laughs> It's like it's like what do they call it? Like hot one. What's the Mike's hot or yeah, Mike's hot. Oh right, or, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. It's or like, the um, uh, red hot. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, red, red hot. hot red yeah, hot. and I'm just like yeah, whatever. It's like red hot, and this shit was like no joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, so Steve likes spicy food, and he yeah. challenged our neighbor by saying that his wings weren't that spicy last well, time. They weren't. So our neighbor decided to grill some shit out of some ghost peppers and uh, yeah. <laughs> had he them do the a different batch. He made two batches. One yeah. was like normal spicy, and this one was like death up your ass spicy. <laughs> yes, death spicy. And we were both man down. Both of you guys. I, I did give a speech after I ate it, though. Before it started to mess with my body. So I was okay taste buds wise, but my God, it yeah. definitely affected my body. Same. Anyway, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, um, welcome back. Thank you for coming back. You're a poker player. Yes. You are known. You are known. So there you go. You are, I've been around and the bed in this niche. Well, you're a tuber as well. In a very, yep. in, you're known I'm in a niche various, tuber. <laughs> yeah, niche tuber. Serious. Poker player. You've also done some trolling in your time, which I very much love. Yes, of course. I've come down in my my later years. You guys didn't know me back in the day. I was like, I was like feisty as fuck. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard <laughs> in a good way. Yeah, in a good yeah, way. Yeah. Of course, um, always. But yeah, well, yeah. Nobody well, likes a feisty chick. Tell us some a little bit about <laughs> that about the the start, like the start, because I know the refined, married. Yes, <laughs> yes, Marley. yes. Yeah, I can't be doing that anymore. <laughs> I'm a lady. Of She's the, a lockdown woman. Yes, yeah. Um, no, I, I started a vlog four, five, four years ago, actually, only. It feels like longer. Oh, right. And I made a couple of videos in the beginning that were like, oh, well, just my vlogs in general, just crazy. Um, and I would just basically have no filter. And I still have no filter, but I feel like now how I describe it is like no topics off limit. But if I know it's inflammatory, I'll just be extra like cautious. Sensitive. Well, I'll just I'll just like put work into like how I word it and right. how I deliver it and how I present it. Whereas before I would just be like, oh, I'm gonna talk about fucking the Holocaust. Like, <laughs> I don't care. Like, you know, whatever it is, I would just just go for it. You know. Yeah, back when it's you crazy. could like just do comedy. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Not yeah. worry about getting canceled over some saying something That's wrong. true. Yeah. Um, well, uh, back so you started with poker. You weren't always vlogging it. You started with poker first. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Tell us how that like how did you transition from like poker into like hey I'm gonna film I'm gonna film this. What were your first were your first logs comedy or were they were they yeah. hand histories? Well, they were comedy. So I started off doing because that was all there was really, and still kind of mostly is just hand history videos where you if don't if you don't know poker, it's hand histories are like where you literally film the cards and then you're like, oh, and then I had Ace King and then I you walk someone through the hand. Um, so I did that. But I would always do it like super out of line. Like I would just say insane shit. Like I'd be like, oh, if you're on the button, you can get away with anything. You can be racist. You can be sexist. You can <laughs> yell slurs, but you can play any hand you want. I would just I would do hands, but I would just make it insane. Yeah. Um, and I they did these two sketches like that weren't hands. That was kind of like what blew up, which was looking for a poker boyfriend, which was I went through the poker room and I was like, fuck Tim, fuck Tim, fuck Tim. There's no one left. <laughs> like whatever. And then I was like, did one called building my poker bankroll, which was basically me being like i'm broke i need to like rebuild my role and then i was like i'm gonna go be a stripper i'm gonna go be a homeless person i'm gonna do this and then i f fuck someone in the bathroom like to get a new bank role. so yeah uh, alluded to I, that yeah. i alluded it. it was yeah. yeah you don't actually get to see it so i mean but go watch it <laughs> yeah. just in case yeah. you get to see it but the yeah. bit obviously is that everyone accuses you of that so you're making fun of that yeah well i was staked at the time and especially like my backer like people would just because he was my ex-boyfriend's like good friend so we lived all lived together and he would tell me like constantly people are like, oh, yeah, you like hitting that, whatever. It was like my like my brother, you know what I mean? And he was like, no, dude, I'm just backing her. 
And just like that's what you get as a woman in poker. So when someone makes fun of me, I'm just going to make fun of myself. I'm just going to be like, yeah, I am. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's I am. what we do. Yep, yep. That's what I'm doing. You, like, whatever you thought about us. <laughs> yeah. Nailed it. Yep. You nailed it. Yep. Um, But, you know, I think that I am super dry and I feel like, you know, I think some definitely some people took it as serious. A lot of women took it as serious <laughs> and they took it as me like encouraging that behavior instead of being like hey like if you're just gonna like accuse me of this i'm just gonna like lean into it a little bit yeah i watched one video where you were like you know um poker is so sexist towards women for every dollar that a man makes i make 50. yeah yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Like, i love that the wage gap yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. It was perfect. <laughs> It's like whatever you think a woman is sucking out of the industry. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, asshole. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Sure. How does that feel? Yeah. Do you think it kind of sucks that like when you're playing poker, you have to play poker almost like representing an entire block of human beings instead of just being an individual and playing poker? Yes. I actually, well, I made a video about this too where it's like I feel like every podcast I do, and Mm -hmm. I was guilty of it too because I had a podcast for a year and a half with Jamie Kerstetter. Um, and we had a lot of women on and naturally you just ask like, yeah, what's it like being a woman in poker? What's it? Do you think you have an edge? Every question is centered around your gender. Yeah. And it's like, I've always kind of just been like, I just want to be treated like, why is this everything filtered totally. through this lens? It's that happens, uh, that happens with stand up comedy too. Cause yeah. I know you were getting, you're yeah. moving, shifting more over to comedy, but like, I yeah. feel like everything's like, who's your favorite female comedian? Yeah. Who's your favorite female poker player? Like, why is it? It's not a. There's, it's not like sports where like mm. clearly men have a muscle advantage or whatever. It's like why why is it different? We're playing the same game, and you're just like attracted yeah. to like a yeah. male dominated field. I just like the game. I yeah. it's, you know, it's it's funny because I think that like it's just the elephant in the room. Like there's so few of us. It's like five percent mm-hmm. women. Um, this game. So it is just so astonishing when you see a woman. I guess in a sea of men, so you can't help but comment on it. Like I said, I'm guilty of it, too, but it's just like I just want and I don't know. Some women really play it up and they kind of want to lean into that. Yeah. And I'm like I just like want, I'd rather you just treated me like any other dude. Right. You know? What's too bad you're not going to exploit it for for personal gain because <laughs> <laughs> you really could get far with it. Yeah. 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 So where'd you start playing poker? Well, my dad played for a living. Um, I lived in Vegas briefly when I was growing up uh, when he played live. And so just him, just like being around just it. Just around it all the time. Wow, that's yeah. really cool to have like a dad yeah. that was a professional poker player. So you're yeah. just like born into the industry. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> I've never heard that story actually. Every story is like, yeah, my parents were really pissed at me. And like, I just wanted to take a chance. So yeah. I really liked the game. And like, it was really hard to convince them. But your dad was like, yeah, that makes, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. He was, he's always been supportive. That's what's good about it. But no, I mean, I... I, but still, even though I was like playing throughout, or I knew about the game and I enjoyed it. I still like wanted to be an actor. That was like my thing. Oh, so originally you wanted to be an actor? Yeah. Well, okay. I was a model in high school, and I was like uh, subtle flex. <laughs> yeah. This was like nice. ten. This was like ten plus years, like fifteen I was years a ago. Model. Uh, well, whatever. now there's people in comments being like, "You were a model." <laughs> yeah, of course. I love those people. Yeah. You just talking about your you life story. You can't it's say like, yeah. anything oh, without really? being like, "Yeah." Oh, you think you're better than us? <laughs> exactly. Oh, oh, really? What have you done? Oh, you think Were you're you hot? on a oh, deserted you, oh, you, island? Yeah. You think yeah. you're hot? Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you think you're really hot? It's the best. It's the best. You're yeah. just saying a fact about yourself. Shout out to those people. Love it. I used um, to say that too, but the things I modeled for were like cat food. Um, yes. I modeled for That's ADD awesome medication. <laughs> yeah, I modeled for, yeah, not the type of model that yeah, you think of, think of modeling. No. Um, what was I going to say? But yeah, I was doing that in high school in Boston, and my dream at that point was to like be a supermodel. But I'm super short and just what's super short? How tall are you? Five seven, which is like yeah, that's not going to cut. A it. dwarf, not going to cut it in the modeling world. Um, and my agent, bless his heart, was like, D- I was going to New York for school, and he was like, I was like, I'm just going to be a supermodel, whatever. He's like, N- You're not. Like, <laughs> you're just too short. There's and- something you don't hear in the modeling yeah. podcast. It's like yeah. somebody who's who's short, right? And and they're like. Well, you know, you don't you have kind of isn't that kind of interesting? You're a short model. No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Never gonna happen. Your yeah. agent goes, mm, you could do catalog, and it's like a- that's what I had been doing is catalog, yeah. oh. and I did and I did in, in New York too, but I just do you know I did some like magazine stuff, but like yeah. I wouldn't do runway. Sears. Sears. You could you could do Sears. You could yeah. Sears you could, is a very Sears is good. Very, very old very reference. Very good. Yes. Mine was like you can do print. Yes. Yeah. That's I'm five great. four. Yeah. That's yeah. Great. Um, you know, anything under like five nine is just like you're just 
don't even exist on this earth. Like, no. why are you even here? Yeah, why are you here? Um, and then I was in New York, and I I forget how I even got on this. What was the question? <laughs> oh, how you uh, started acting? Start, yeah, yeah started, into got into poker, oh. but then you originally wanted oh wanted to be an actor. Yeah, yeah. So I was just doing this, and so I was in that world, and because I couldn't be like a supermodel i was like oh i just was booking commercials and stuff and that's kind of how i got my foray into it and then i quit university and did two acting schools and i was like oh i can like kind of do it but in a different way because i'm short and useless yeah <laughs> so <laughs> life cut up yeah yes exactly i'm past my prime and so, yeah. i'm a brunette so, yeah exactly <laughs> oh. you actually but. really remind me of tina fey with the glasses oh yeah thanks. What gets you? What gets you going? Okay, I'm acting. You know, this maybe isn't what what I thought it was going to be. I'm thinking about poker now. Oh well, you guys are in the industry. Like I was just auditioning and bricking and auditioning and bricking and booking some things, then getting close and then bricking and yeah, audition life really prepared me for tournament life. Yeah, it's nice. super high variance. It's a lot of rejection. A lot of yeah. like oh yeah, practicing, studying, prepare me for crypto. and then yeah. You didn't get it. You didn't get it. You didn't get it's it. It's actually worse in some ways because I feel like the gods decide your variants in poker, whereas yeah. like some dude in a fucking suit yes. who doesn't even know what the fuck's going on decides your fate yep. in the entertainment industry. So it's actually worse. Yeah, because it's actually personal. But, like whereas, Or sometimes you're there and they already booked the role, but they have to just kind of go through the rigmarole. Yep. It's my my ex-husband, or my ex-husband, my ex-boyfriend, we were not married, <laughs> in New York when I was like 20, um, was a director and he did commercials and like I always tell the story of like he was booking this big commercial for AMC and Microsoft and he watched the first tape in bed and just was like oh, let's just do them and they had like tons of people he didn't even watch and I was like those people have like died yeah will like change yeah. their life and they take it so personally after yes. I had a manager yeah. who would uh, lecture me every time I didn't book a role he was pretty crazy and toxic mm -hmm. but like he was uh yeah very like overbearing and like every time wow. i didn't book it like he would even if it was like a two-line audition he would like what do you what are you thinking do you think like maybe you need to get back into shape you know maybe you need to get more tv ready maybe like you didn't deliver the run like if you can't book a two-liner like i don't know what's wrong with you and like but like he would just crazy berate me but yeah when you know the inside but stuff. like then you know you have that back the you know the the behind the scenes and mm. it's like well actually it's sometimes it has nothing to do with you Most sometimes, of the time. like sometimes the casting director is even like we like this person and the director's like nah i got an, a nephew that wants his first shot we're gonna give it to that Legit. guy or sometimes like and this is crazy too like um you know youtube started becoming a thing numbers yeah. started becoming a thing so they're like we really want this person for the role so it doesn't matter you're auditioning all these other people they mm. already just want this person for the role mm. because of the numbers attached to them yeah. like the social media the presence followers. yeah it's fucking it's hilarious all, well, i'm sure it's worse because that's all about what your likes are and your following and your subscribers yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's crazy because when i started um like really going doing the audition grind was like 2008 mm. 2009 and that manager yeah it's crazy uh knew that i was doing youtube and i was getting kind of a follow a big following on youtube and he was like you're not going to be taken seriously as an actor. You need to stop doing YouTube and cut the cord, blah, blah, blah. Don't even mention it. Don't say anything yeah. about it. And it then was. like five years later, mm. you go into an audition. They're like, so how's your social media following? And I'm like, that's so crazy. Yeah. You're ahead of the game. <sighs> yeah. So but, did you see, yeah. did it help you then? Like, because you had that following? I, I think or? it helped me get more opportunities for mm. sure. Um, I I think any edge you can take, you you have to take it in entertainment. And you know, yeah. my first acting coach actually said that he's like, I'm not, I'm gonna teach you how to act, but I'm gonna teach you guys more about the business behind acting because yeah. how to make money is gonna be more important than being the best, most talented actor. The most talented actor, you don't even know who they are yeah. because mm. the, they they didn't get cast enough or whatever. But you make, need to make money. And the more yeah. up the chain you look, like you see a lot of actors who are just playing themselves and they yeah. did really well. Yeah, they like Ryan Reynolds is awesome. Yeah. yeah, but he's just being Ryan Reynolds out there and it's like good for him definitely yeah. he did that buried movie but which he's very good in but i'm saying when he makes the money he's yeah. making it as himself same with jennifer aniston yeah. there's a lot of like people that when you start you should play roles closer to yourself and then like branch can, out yeah branch out yeah. but yeah he was basically like the mm -hmm. first way you're gonna get cast is by knowing someone does it sit, like you have to uh, be born into the industry second way is you're rich as fuck and you can just pay your way in 
third way is Closer. you have to be like the most beautiful like some of the top 10 percent most beautiful people like yeah. just good looking people Especially are just gonna cast more yeah. yeah i heard a great bit and it then was, fourth is talent he somebody said. was saying that margot robbie has never had a bad time as a woman in hollywood because <laughs> it's just like she's just like they just throw roles at her so they dump roles like on her front porch as like a leading lady or whatever <laughs> she's just so gorgeous Cause she's yeah beautiful woman and all that stuff but then like obviously going up yeah. the chain like uh, people who were beautiful yeah. nobody calls them anymore yeah very interesting um but Crazy. so you 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 decide to pivot into poker mm. is your dad like i don't know about this no he's very supportive he definitely it's like good and bad that he really understands what it is because he's supportive and he understands it that it's a legitimate career and it's not gambling really um but he went broke he had some he's seen some dirty sides of it and so he's also just like you know you could do anything. You protect, you, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like why are you wasting your life kind of. Um, but he's very supportive. And certainly now that I'm kind of doing Yeah, the old style, things. the old uh, poker stories I hear are pretty nuts. Like yeah, when the regulation wasn't as strict. Yeah. I mean, it still can get pretty nuts. Like but, what? Well, I mean, like there's a lot of che a lot more cheating, oh. like, easier to get away with cheating. Yeah. Um, Just like. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a casino game. You know, it's going to be rife with just s sketchy characters. It still is, but there's mm. just more regulations and gaming, can, you know, gaming is just tighter. More people got caught and then helped to catch the people who are doing the bad thing, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you actually did the thing that everyone tells you not to do, which is uh, date someone in your field. Yes. <laughs> We're also guilty, but... Uh, you met your husband yeah. through poker. Yeah. Tell us about that. I've actually uh, honestly always done that though. Yeah. I always, I've met, I think all of my serious boy, every person I've ever dated at like work or in my field. Like I just, some people like the separation of they come home and they don't, their spouse doesn't know anything about what they do. That makes me feel like you're not, in my world. Like, yeah. that's such a big part of who I am. Yeah. Especially since it's like poker is such a unique kind of lifestyle, acting is a unique lifestyle. If you don't understand the lifestyle at all, it's like, I just feel so disconnected from you. That's Would it. you say that so. you're a shitter where you're an eater? Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah. She, 100%. she ate those wings. She definitely likes eating shit. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah. Well, it helps It helps to have somebody in your, in your field so that they understand what you're going through, maybe. I think so, because I, I mean, obviously, some people feel like they just don't want to come home and talk about work, and so they kind of prefer the opposite. I think most people are like that, actually. Well, most people hate yeah. their jobs. I think that's that, why. That's true. They spend all day at the job yeah. that they hate, and they don't want to talk, don't talk about, about it after. It's, it's yeah. like when Jennifer Lopez married that um, waiter, yeah. and it's like, well, she married for love, but like, there's just some barriers that like he's not going to understand her world. Yeah. She's not going to understand his world. <laughs> that's an extreme example because yeah. she's like. <laughs> Her world is just Mars, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, we met in Reno doing commentary um, and just became friends. And then uh, like... Six Did you know who he was before you started commentary? No. Okay. Because like the Twitch world, he plays online. By the way, for those of you who don't know, um, her husband is Spraggy on Twitch. Huge poker Twitch streamer. Check he's, him out. Yeah. He's, he's a Brit. He's a Brit. He's a Euro. He never comes to the States. It was... He used to be sponsored by Poker Stars. It's the only reason why he was there. Um, he doesn't really play live poker. And yeah, it was just a random thing. And we just became friends. And then I did, a, I hosted a tournament in London and I hit him up and we hung out um, and as friends. And then just became friends. And then one day I was like, just I have a friends. crush on you. Just friends. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, it happened. Um, you had a crush on him because it doesn't feel like you're hanging out with your best friend. Like that oh, kind of, yeah. 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 I mean, I'm just very like, when I meet new people, especially, I'm just like, who are you? I don't feel comfortable with you. I don't know you. And I just felt very comfortable with him. Yeah, I met her at a drag bar and she was like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> she yeah. was, like, I was no. like, no, I'm cool, I'm cool. No, no, no. I'm just kidding. She didn't do that. She didn't do that. <laughs> I had a few drinks. That helps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, that's, re that's really cool. So um, you were telling me that so you started dating and then and then the pandemic hit. So yeah. that was your first year of dating was like living with each other. Yeah. You like moved in with him. Yeah. How did that happen? I was visiting him in the UK in March and just was there for a week. We had a wedding to go to. And right when I was about to leave was when things were shutting down. And it was like that was like the fucking when shit hit the fan. And we were like, holy shit, this could be serious. Maybe I'll just stay and just because we could be separated and who knows. And so I just stayed and I stayed until November. And then 
and yeah. you just kept staying. And we got engaged. Aww. <laughs> How did he propose? Yeah. We were in Dublin um, because I could only stay in the UK for six months. Um, and then we went to Dublin just because I had to leave the country. And they were in complete lockdown. Like everything was completely shut down. So we went, he took me to like a, the park mm. and just proposed in the park. And then we had a couple of friends who are Irish and they had set up like a picnic for us with like champagne and stuff. Sick. It was really so simple. Sweet. And then we grinded online after. <laughs> <laughs> I no love way, that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. You watched fo- a football game. You watched your Colts get wrecked, like before, right before, before, right not after. Before, before, yeah, yeah. I um, have a little more class. But uh, <laughs> so that's so interesting. So you guys started dating. You moved in right away, which means he didn't mind living with you. Like you guys didn't mind living with each other. Usually, that's no. like the make or break it time. People delay that process. We're yeah. always like move in as soon as you can. Yes, yeah. because the sooner you know if you can live with someone, then you could just. Like, you don't have to guess anymore if, like, this is going to be a long-term thing. Because yeah. that'll let you know real quick. Dude, pain is growth, bro. Like, you're going to learn from the pain of, like, maybe initially yeah. living with each other. Uh-huh. And that's where you'll either grow uh, with that person or or realize it's time to grow away from them. 100%. No, it was – I mean, it was just such a, like – we had so much fun. Like it wasn't even hard. That's <laughs> awesome. Know. It was yeah. great. I don't know. We were still in the like, super honeymoon phase. Yeah. It was just like we had a great time. I had a great time during COVID. I don't know. And then, <laughs> I had a great time. My COVID great was so quote. great. What a quote. <laughs> it was good for me. I, yeah. yeah. Love Wait, it. You guys like had not a good time during the pandemic? I heard some That's people didn't like, have a good time. Why? Why? Weird. Did you try like getting <laughs> proposed to yeah. or like <laughs> try being like a like a loving relationship? Like I don't like, get it. Very fresh and like new. <laughs> and you guys like both like the same things? Like well, did you even try? I thought you were dry. That's you're just being honest. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, so so you now you're yeah. now you play poker with your guy yeah. and one of my favorite things cuz cuz we also have we we have Chris Mormon in our lives with with Katie and yeah, yeah. they I love hearing them argue with each other about poker. It's one of my favorite <laughs> fucking things in the world to hear yeah. a husband and, and wife argue about their field. It's like yes. what they both do. Yeah, because to an outsider like Steve for example does not play poker at all. I don't play poker. So it's yeah. like hearing like a completely different language yes. and yeah. To the outsider, poker is like, oh, a fun game. And then yeah. people are like really seriously talking about their hands and like. Well, and there's the husband and wife element of like. The husband and wife, yeah. Oh, I'm right and you're wrong. And like, but you're you're talking about a game where anybody could be right or wrong. How yeah. is that? How, how do those combos go? Oh, I made, I made a video about it, a couple. But I made one in particular about it. And it's just, it's, it's usually me, although it's both of us. Um, I can't, like, for example, when I played Hustler, I played on the Husker scene alive. Yeah, check and, that out. Right. They took our phone away and then I got my phone off back off after stream. The first text he was he was like, that five seven call was like the worst play anybody made on stream the whole night. And I was like, <laughs> I literally fucking hate you. I mean, he just like, wants me to play well, so he's like really yeah. hard it's like hard on me in a good way. Dad, tiger dad. <laughs> I was like, I don't need to hear any criticism. It's just so hard because I'm not in the state right then to like yeah. hear. I knew it was a pun. Yeah, you're not like, it's not I like, didn't hey, know, let's but... go over this. Like, did you notice any hands that I blah, blah, blah? The next like, day. Like, yeah. when I'm ready to receive the tough news that I mm. punted away our money, you know? <laughs> but right after is so yeah. hard. Like sometimes so I come hard. back from just playing like ca- a cash session like on the strip and he's like, how'd it go? I'm like, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Like, if I lost, I don't want to talk about it. If I won, I, I still don't have anything to report other than I won. Yeah. You know, uh, but yeah. But I just so wanted like, how was re- your day? I just wanted to house yeah, your yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but to have someone in the, in that knows the hands and then like, it's okay, well, this happened. Yeah, and yeah I, I'm not in the right mindset, but that's like, he, he does want you to do. Do you think he's making the text and he's like, he's like, hey, just so you know. <laughs> and then he's like, you know, he's like, he's like, that was, that was not great. And then he's like, nah, I'm going to let her have it, dude. You know what I mean? He's like, nah, 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 that's not good enough. That was the worst shit I saw the yeah. whole stream. You know what I mean? No, literally. And he doesn't even hold back. His like, he's not even delegate. He's just like, that was like, he was like, that was a $500 bet. It's probably losing $497. Oh tonight. my gosh. Like, I was like, thank you. Yeah, he's really good with the technical stuff. Yeah. Like, wow. I, I had only yeah. seen um, a few clips before I ever met you guys. I used to watch like Brad Owen's vlogs a lot and you guys were in one of them. And, mm. um, but you, you left like earlier oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he got in a hand with Spraggy over where he Brad got a set of twos 
And he wasn't supposed to even open or three bet with pocket two, so mm. Spraggy couldn't put him on a hand. I think Spraggy had queens. Oh. Um, or something. And then anyway, it might have been reversed, but he broke down Spraggy broke down the math, like during the hand, like it's all on the vlog, like where he's like do the math, count the combos, da, 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 like and and yeah. like ran through this whole thing. I was so impressed by that, where I was like, "Wow, I gotta study more. <laughs> I gotta yeah. study. I gotta study more." Because and guy then Spraggy lost off. the hand. Exactly. That's why he's flexing <laughs> on him. He <laughs> <laughs> got wiped out. Trying to save hand. face, yeah. dude. Hey, you lost. So I don't care about the fucking combos, dude. Are you counting chips or not? It did put him in a really tough spot, which I think is almost more exciting than whether the person calls or folds is like putting them in a really tough spot where you they're mean like verbally no or they, well like whatever with your bet size oh, with okay. with in a spot where they're not sure what to do yeah that's like kind of the the fun part when you're the aggressor that made them sweat i see yeah like you're hoping for a, you know whatever you're hoping for maybe you want them to fold maybe you want them to call but like the fun part is like you did that to them mm -hmm. we're going to now go on a break but when we return we're going to talk about poker industry as a whole we're gonna talk about your th where you see yourself in that industry don't as point, a whole don't point at people it's don't point and, it's rude. and we're going to be right back <laughs> stop you're offending on the our shit guys. they do not tell you what about network we'll be right back when it comes to therapy and psychiatry, getting the help you need has never been so simple. So when you're able to access your provider from the comfort of your device, it means mental health care can be on your schedule and alleviating the wait times to get an appointment or the travel time to get to an office can free up time for the rest of your life. Talkspace is so convenient and accessible. It helps me feel so supported around the clock. Like I don't need to wait for the next appointment. I can just text my therapist when I'm going through something that I am going through and not have to remember all the details. She's just there to tell me what I need to hear right Right then. Talkspace lets you send messages to your dedicated therapist in the Talkspace platform, which lets you, you know, update them on the challenges or even the triumphs that you're facing in real time. If something feels overwhelming for you or maybe something really positive happened to you, but you don't know what to do next, it's really catered to what you're going through. Yeah, you can set goals with your therapist and they hold you accountable and make sure you're really progressing, kind of like you know, actually taking the time to get to know you personally and what you're going for. There's a whole therapist network. There's thousands of licensed therapists with years of experience and over 40 specialties, including depression, anxiety, substance abuse, trauma, anger management, relationship issues, food and eating, so much more. And as a listener of this podcast, you'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com. Make sure to use the code STDTY to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's S-T-D-T-Y at Talkspace.com. How often do you check your credit score, Steve? Probably, honestly, once a year. Really? Yeah. That's really bad. Well, because I always got scared because when I was growing up, every time you checked it, it could be bad. Yeah. Yeah, I get notifications on mine, but it's still not very often. And sometimes it decreases and I'm like, why? Well, anyway, at Chime, that's exactly what they do is they monitor your credit and they help you build it. So with their secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can start to build credit with your own money. Chime reports your payments to credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. Their members see an increase of up to 30 points on average. Yeah, so what it does is if even if you have never built credit or you took a hit to your credit score recently and you're having trouble getting approved, what this is is a credit card it helps build your credit, but you're what you're actually doing is depositing your own money using the credit card and then paying it off right away in cash. So it helps you build your credit while not needing to get approved. There's no annual fees. There's no large security deposits or credit checks to apply. When I turned 20, I realized I didn't have any credit whatsoever. And that was something like this would have been perfect. Yeah. Because I was looking around for something like it's this. It's pretty common. And how do you get... It's like... How do you a, make up for How that? do you get it without... Yeah. It's a catch twenty two. You can't apply for one because you, you have don't no credit have. History, yeah, but you so. can't get a credit history until you. People have get asked credit. us, by the way, about this for years. How do I build my credit? I have nothing. Yeah, like Chime really is like an answer. Exactly. So start your credit journey with Chime. Sign up only takes two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com/stdty. That's Chime.com/stdty. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank NA, pursuant to a license from Visa USA. Chime checking account and two hundred dollar qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact to score may vary, and some user scores may not improve. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply except at MoneyPass ATMs in a 7-Eleven or any AllPoint or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. 
And welcome back. Hello. Hope you guys checked out some of our sponsors. They Hope you bought whatever we told you to buy. Um, actually, we didn't talk about this, but uh, when I when you first started changing your style of clothing, three grand. I was like, it actually reminds me of Spraggy's outfits. <laughs> That's what I said. Yeah, Spraggy, if you're watching this, which you better be because you consume online content. Um, That's right. <laughs> you look amazing. Well, you inspired me to wear it last week because I I told you that I have a rebrand, but I wasn't going to do it this week because I didn't want you to hate me on first sight. Yeah, and, and then, then I you was explained like, to me, oh no, he actually, yeah. yeah. So I was like, all right, we're good. How many, does does Spraggy just have like one that he wears over and over again? Or does he have like a Doug collection of like track, track suits? suits? <laughs> Dozens. <laughs> he just bought six more, he just bought six more tops. He's like, I'm splurging, f- treating myself for W. I'm like, yeah, they're like 60. He's like, I'm splurging. I'm like, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Same with him. They're cheap. They're like $45. I they're love cheap. these things. They're cheap. I yeah. love them. He, and they're comfy. He did send me a Gucci suit the other day and was like, I don't know, I can't justify it. And I'm like, it's actually pretty class. You yeah. should treat yourself. But he's a like, Gucci I, suit? A Gucci, like, um, you know, tracksuit. Like track yeah. Suit. yeah. Dope. He, he yeah. could have, like, a final table tracksuit. Like, yes. he changes into the Gucci suit when he, when he final tables. Yeah, special occasion. I think that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Or I'm like, more oh, of a Balenciaga guy, but I get it. Yeah. yeah. He, he does not spend any. He has got a nice car, and that's it. He will wear the same pair of shoes until they have holes in them. Don't he, you love it? He just does not spendy i am that's a little bit this one but i'd like him to think that what he's doing is splurging so that Thank he you. doesn't look my direction Thank when you. i spend money <laughs> yeah I, I don't yeah he doesn't yeah um, so the poker industry as a whole uh-huh. right now there is a huge fucking craze which is called hand histories right like yeah. and it's been i know that in the poker community it's been known but it's actually kind of broke out into more to of the a layman. mainstream yeah, yeah like like a bunch mm. of noobs who are like don't really know poker who are trying to learn about it they're mm. all watching like a lot of hand histories right yeah. now so like, how does that, I mean, I know that for someone who's been doing this for a long time, mm. and I don't want to speak for you, but I, what I keep hearing is that everyone's kind of, in the poker industry is kind of sick of it, but no, it really like works. Sick of put, creating the content. Yeah, creating the content, it, exactly. It just gets boring, because it's what they do day in and day out. Is that is that right? Yeah, and I'm trying to think about it in like entertainment terms, but it's kind of just like the most basic, that not only do they want to see hands, they want to see just like, 101 like the most yeah. basic like fundamental strategy with you know because people you gotta think about like a layman doesn't understand mm-hmm. like, they're a casual person it's understandable that they just want complete basics and obviously if you're in the industry doing complete basics it gets old after a while yeah I just, look so. uh, as a layman i am you're talking to the yeah the pointy head layman yeah i love the drama of the flop I fucking love it. So that's the, that's what gets you. That's what gets me every single time. What's the flop going to be? What's the flop going to be? Who's got what? And what's the flop going to be? Because you could sit there with two aces. I know this much. Uh-huh. I know this much. And then you see two nines on the flop and you don't see any aces. And then you're like, whoa, I could be in trouble with uh-huh. my aces that I thought were going to rock it. Uh-huh. So They're I know that much, but I'm pun. just saying like the drama yeah, of that. Cause I don't think he meant it. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm, even a, know. I'm a huge sports fan. I fucking love sports. Uh-huh. Um, and there is such a high amount of drama in the flop that mm. I find it. I think I'm, I get addicted to watching the flop. Interesting. What about the turn? You don't like the turn? Turn's cool. It's only one card. Turn's cool. It's just not as dramatic not as, as the juicy, flop. The flop it dramatically changes. The flop, yeah. the whole dick on the table, and yeah. everyone's like, "Oh shit!" Right. Yep. The 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 turn is cool though. It helps you narrow it all down. But the flop really does. It's like, oh shit. Yeah. Do you like watching the hand histories because you feel like, okay, what would I do in this situation? Like, if he raised me on this, like, what? No, I just want to no? see somebody get wrecked or not wrecked. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> it's like watching car accident videos, which is another one of my favorite things. <laughs> I love watching people in yeah. expensive cars yeah. doing dick maneuvers. Uh, like, like I got a Lamborghini. I'm going around all you stupid plebs. And then he just goes into the side of an embankment. <laughs> and like, da- you know, like $250,000 of damage immediately. Yeah. Boom. Like instant justice. I like that shit. See, well, that's interesting because like I can't even answer the question as good as you because the question is why do they do so well and someone who's outside of poker knows better than me because I can't fucking That's I, so figure. true. And I'm dressed like a noob who plays poker too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. I mean, I I watched a lot of poker vlogs when I first started um, and it was more because like when you're studying GTO or like you're studying with a sim um, like they, they're playing perfectly so like it doesn't train you to play in real life and so mm-hmm. the first like real life lesson when I went to play the casino, I was like, this doesn't play like the computer at all. Mm. And then watching the poker vloggers, like having them d- explain like what the other person might be thinking or like why they're making that bet size or whatever. Cause mm. the sim also wants you to bet like really minuscule sometimes, like open with like a two times dig blind bet. Mm-hmm. Um, 
yeah like they they would uh they would kind of like break all that down so that was cool as a beginner and then but i will say like as when they started playing higher stakes i was like i don't relate to this anymore i'm not yeah. i'm not playing with a hundred thousand dollars it's, it's like you're watching you know somebody talking shit right yep. usually on on a stream people like are, are establishing their personalities a little bit uh -huh. and so they're talking about their hands or whatever and they're usually get, there's some cockiness to it which is which i find very enjoyable i yeah. like that part right yeah and then it's almost like cutting to the inside of a nascar driver right you got yeah. that fucking mm -hmm. camera in the window mm -hmm. and he's like hey watch this i'm about to rock it and then he fucking goes into a wall yeah. you know what i mean like, like it's like that yeah it, it like fucking does 800 spins and then yeah. like goes off the side of the thing like that's what it's like it's like watching somebody go from the highest of the highs to the lowest of lows yeah and like seeing how they rebuild from there i just mm. find it all fascinating it's mm. like it's like an a, a three-act story happening very very fast every time yeah. oh that's true that's i didn't think of it that it's way a lot of drama so yeah. you were on your youtube channel uh -huh. You were you're doing some hand history videos mm -hmm. and they do well, um, and then you also do other content that um, is hit or miss. Like so, like it, it yeah. you love making it, but you're like you know sometimes it doesn't. I feel like because I started a new YouTube channel like for mainstream content just recently. Yeah, and I want. By the way, we're gonna put it in the description so check it out. Yes, please. Um, and I did that because. I could I could have just posted it on my poker channel, but I want people I don't want to get those comments of like what even is this or like I expect it I don't want them to come for yeah. poker and then I give them mainstream shit. Um, so I was like, hey, I'm doing this new channel. This is what it's going to be. If you want that kind of thing, which is kind of scary because you have to really you really yeah. get the, the hard truth of like who's actually interested in hearing from you and not just yeah. like want to see poker. But um, I have like almost a thousand subs in like nice. very short time, and so it was like wow, like. Some people there are. I think I have like a really solid group of like diehards. Yeah, like but, it's a great foundation. Yeah, but especially it's, for like consistent. Yeah, for just like hey, this is just gonna be me. Like yeah, do you want to sign up? Um, but yeah, I just think it's so hard because you obviously I definitely want numbers. Like you get addicted to like what doing you know doing what works. But I guess I think the thing too is like people don't come to me to learn strat as much as they come to like Brad or Andrew because it's like I'm kind of like a cute girl at the time I was like young and they're kind of more like I feel like the average viewer is a guy right they can't yeah. see themselves in me You're an ex supermodel girl oh, oh supermodel yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> regular model girl yeah, regular print, model. yeah. okay scum 5'7 <laughs> um, but uh, no I don't just think that this is like my thing but yeah, well, it's what you feel in your heart. So yeah. this is actually what we connected on right off the bat because I, I mean, obviously have been doing YouTube full time since 2009 and um, started with comedy and then moved into vlogs. And so I know that people like I know mm -hmm. what people are watching me for kind of now, like and I love it. Like I love on the vlog channel. I love vlogging my daily life mm -hmm. on the comedy channel. I was doing a cooking comedy channel, too. And and like that's what people uh, like came to the channel for and subscribed. And like you yeah. really have to think of it. Like when someone hit that subscribe button, that's what they subscribe. For. This is the type of content they hit the button for. Yes, yes. And so when I started getting into poker and on my vlog channel, I'm just vlogging my daily life. But now poker is mm -hmm. becoming more a part of that life. Mm -hmm. um, I struggled with like well, I want to be sharing like what I'm going through with poker, but there's a lot of people that don't understand or aren't interested. And, and mm -hmm. so I, I had considered starting a second and a third channel for yeah. poker, but then it's like, how do you balance, how do you balance that, um, that workload yeah. of, are you continuing to post content on the poker channel and then also mm -hmm. posting content on the main channel? And how is that working out for you? Well, I honestly like I I kind of knew that I wanted to do more mainstream stuff for a while now and I it just really scares me because well my identity is poker it's just a lot safer the menu is a lot smaller I just feel like this is it's just one of my comfort zone and when you open it up to like now you could just make it about anything yeah at least I have a style and I know kind of like the the vibe like I know I wouldn't do sketches. I know they're going to be short. And I know my I know my general like, sense of humor. So that's not starting from like square one. But it's scary. And I put it off for a long time. But I just realized that I'm just... I had a convo with um, a big content creator. And I was in um, uh, Barcelona. And he was just like, you're just never going to like grow unless you branch out. Like this is just so capped. That's true. And so it really gave me the push to be like, 
fuck it. You and know? do you have a lot of ideas that you want to do and like you never get to explore them if you just keep focusing yeah. on the the poker channel? I have ideas, but I'm like, you know, like poker ideas, I just kind of know they'll work. And yeah. so they feel safer. Um, whereas these, I, I kind of like question my own sense of humor, like what works, because I'm just like, does that, is that, does, will that work? Because I haven't done it before, so mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, that work is the basis of every fucking creative thing ever. Yeah. 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 And that's actually, I think that's the beauty of it. Like a lot of people are are mad because they're like, I want my channel to be big already. And it's like, well, no, actually you don't because this is the part where you're figuring it out. And um, you don't want like, a hundred thousand mm. eyeballs on you telling you what a bad job you did or telling you you yeah. should have done it this way or that way or whatever it would have been funny if you did this instead it pulls on when your voice it, yeah where you're yes. in the very beginning and like you get to experiment and like it's scary mm. but it's also like fun because like i'll try this and see if it works and i don't have to worry that like there's a dedicated audience that is used to seeing just the same video every single mm-hmm. time and now i'm trying something new yeah. like you're in an experimental phase so it's kind of kind of fun in that way it's fun yeah for especially sure. if you don't I was telling, like, talking about this too. Like, if you really like need the views for like sustaining your income or mm. or something, then it can kind of hurt your creativity because yeah. you're you're just wanting to stick to like what works and what brings in views. But when you don't yeah. have that, yeah, that worry in the back of your mind, yeah, for sure. I it's just scary. It's just I'm definitely at, at this new chapter now, and it's really scary scary so but it's I, but that's how i know i'm doing the right thing yeah because i was at the point with poker videos where i wasn't at the i wasn't really at will this work i was like i know this will work mm-hmm. i like I, it was formulaic because i like knew what base i some things are better than other things but i generally like knew it would work yeah and that's kind sense. of like a bad place to be almost because then it's Creatively. like you're yeah you're kind of on autopilot a little bit yeah you know? it's all the, always like what you're uh what your drive comes from right like some people i was always kind of jealous of the people that mm-hmm didn't really care about the creativity like they're not yeah. like super creative people but they know it works online and they just were able to do it consistently mm. and maybe they're bored maybe they're not but they don't really care because they're driven by consistency and money and growth yeah. and and like they're not bothered i would get bothered by being stagnant like for a while and i was always kind of mad at myself for that because he's like i could just keep doing this thing forever mm. and it would work but i don't i feel like a different person now and i think yeah that's kind of what you're going through and yeah. and anyone that is more of a creative person could probably relate to that yeah. um you tweeted something uh about this a while like a couple months ago yeah and i loved reading the responses because um i knew some of the people in the responses and uh i could i've definitely could tell go yeah this that makes sense because this person is way more creative and then this person's mm-hmm. like well i just go by the numbers and it's kind of that way in poker too yeah, yeah you have like the technical people and then you have the like intuitive people and the live read people yeah, yeah. The field players yeah no it's hard <clears throat> um i always struggle with that because sometimes i feel like i go too far the other way where i'm like so because well because what happened for me was i was doing everything when I came to my vlog I got so many opportunities I did my podcast I hosted Triton which I did interviews I was playing in this huge nosebleed game at Aria private Mm -hmm. games I was doing commentary and tournaments I was doing literally everything and still making vlogs and then I started therapy and I was like okay like what do I actually want to like focus on what could I what would I actually want to do if I could do anything and the answer was just to make content that like I would actually watch because frankly like a lot of stuff I had made like I wouldn't really watch it personally um it just kind of was what worked or whatever and I was like that was my only goal is I just want to make shit that I think is good and that's what I've been doing for the last year um but I feel like I kind of in that process got too far in the rabbit hole of like artsy fartsy with it and I think that now I'm ready to find now that I've like done that I'm like okay now I gotta now I feel that I'm actually can trust myself that I can keep that going I'm gonna like try to grow it and think more business Dude, yeah that's, I wish more you know? I wish people would hear what you just said and re- repeat it like 17 times in a row I'm not kidding because sometimes I'm trying to watch hand history videos and guys are like cutting their fucking crane shots or something or like some part of their day I don't give a shit about <laughs> I don't give a fuck, dude, that you went to McDonald's. I don't give a shit. 
please just get to the fucking hand history part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, they think it's, like, creatively fulfilling or something. Or, like, to cut to them getting off an airplane and putting the bag on. And we all know you're a jet setting around the world to play poker, bro. I don't give a fuck. Just show me the jacks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, show me where you're I at. I will the see. Table. This is where I get stuck is, like, that's... <clears throat> So yeah. I love that part is like picking out the, I love picking out background music. I love like explaining a story. Like it's not just the thing I'm doing, but it's like the story as a mm. whole of my life, right? And mm. and so uh, I can relate when you have a creative person that's like trying to stick to this formula that works, but they have this like other part that's pulling them. So I get, I get that. And actually, so wait, sorry, okay, yeah. off, but like, so are you saying that we shouldn't follow that creative edge? We should just kind of, I, should saying, separate it. Yeah, chill a little bit on the frou mm. stuff that mm. doesn't, it's not relevant to me. I think right. he's you know saying I mean? like, you're doing the right thing by separating right thing. Yeah. two you, different channels. You just said you were being mm. self-aware, going like, yeah. I realized I was too in the fru- like artsy fartsy shit. And I think that a lot of people make that mistake, but you kind of try to, you have to go there to find your voice, I think. But yeah. then yeah. I think you also have to just think about what your audience is there for, because mm. that's key to the whole game, right? Otherwise, just make videos, let's make home movies and like literally just rewatch them. Definitely. Like, go for it. Like, mm. honestly, and I'm not even like making fun of everybody, anybody when I say that. I just think that some people actually do do that. And yeah. it's like, you're not Casey Neistat, bro. Like, you're like, that's his thing. In his lane, nobody's waiting for Casey Neistat to get to the point because that's the point of a Casey Neistat video is you're just hanging out with the guy. Yeah. So that's cool. It's the different vibes of the different channel. Different vibes. It's like, what's your through What's your through line? And like, you know, like like as somebody who's written scripts and shit, it's like, get to the fucking story already, dude. You get you got to get to the story quick or everyone's already out. Nobody cares anymore. Yeah, that's what I was telling you. Like, uh, with including more poker stuff into my regular vlogs, I'm like, I'm scared I'm splitting. I'm alienating my audience a little bit because... Mm -hmm. The way I want to, the way I'm talking about the game is not like lame and friendly, but I like want to connect to other people in that, you know, and so I'm like, well, maybe I should just start another channel, but then that's hard too. So I started a Twitch stream for that, but I feel like mm -hmm. the same but opposite with you where you like went too far this direction and now you're finding the balance. I feel like I went just deep in the hole with poker where I like wasn't uploading videos for a while and now just like kind of rebalancing out. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it is um, when it comes to like art and business, like what you love and like versus like what's going to make the money. Just like my acting coach earlier was talking about, like yeah. you have to if you're going to sustain the business part of it, you have to delay some of the art part of it. And he would be like, get typecast as much as you can, make all the money, mm. and then you can branch out and do your like what mm. fulfills you as a person. Maybe you want to do a play or like maybe you want to do something. It's not like money related um and when so it's always a at, struggle you, when you look at youtube analytics right like mm -hmm. when you look behind the video of like what people are there for you can tell where people have drop the most off. attention and where people drop off and if if you're sitting there and you can understand that yes me talking here about how i went to mcdonald's is something that i liked because i told this quick joke in it and i really liked the, the way that i sound in this joke mm -hmm versus like where you see your audience mm -hmm. is actually hanging out and it's like not there yeah it's time to get rid of there and keep and get to the point where where you know that's how i grew on mm -hmm. youtube right it, it was just about distilling your video down 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 like i remember i used to watch all these man on the street videos and like it would take a while for it to get to the conflict and i was like god damn it Mm. I want the conflict right away. So that was all my man in the street videos were. That's all they were. I just mm. got, it was started with conflict. It it was all conflict the whole fucking time. And that's how I grew. So mm. like, and I was listening to Mr. Beast talk recently. He's like the most famous YouTuber now. Yeah. And he was, he was talking about engagement and how you can just, you know, you can just tell when you're in, in a conversation with somebody, even mm. when everyone's going to lose their focus on it. If you've mm. been paying attention to this stuff over over time and it's time to trim that out mm -hmm. and get to the fucking point again. Right. Mm. And you can actually start to boil your own content down and really just making it as engaging as possible. Yeah, I think it gets tough, though. Like, um, I, I love like that's a great analysis because. It does take time to hone yeah. that part of it. it. Like you have to really listen to yourself. Yeah, and That's like what would I part. what would I watch back? You know, when you're creating content, that you're like, I want to be proud of like and watch like make mm. content that I would watch. Mm. You have to like look at it with an outside eye and like kill your babies sometimes. Think about and, your audience. Yeah, and um and take out the parts that you like you like, but like maybe it doesn't help the narrative of the story or like the the video as a whole. And I I do think that's yeah. harder for creative people. Um, just because. 
like yeah you fall in love with your your stuff sometimes and yeah well creative yeah. can be a pejorative as well right like it can be a, a bad thing too right like like mm. you're a creative person in a way where you just made the brown bunny and you're Vincent Gallo and you had a chick suck your dick and like, you, you know, but it's art and it's a beautiful fucking piece of work and like you're going to try to submit it to festivals and shit. Like mm. that's creative, sure. Mm. But everybody just thought you made porn yeah. <laughs> at the same time. You know, so, so you have to really just kind of check yourself a little bit, look in the mirror, uh, I think, at all times. Mm -hmm. um, definitely. Yeah. Well, I mean, I definitely, yeah, it's hard for me because I guess I just don't really, I kind of, I definitely have trimmed it down in the beginning. I was like d dawdling around even like in the early videos and like not getting to like the actual point and I'm it's like a lot cleaner, but I guess I'm still like not even 100% clear of like why my stuff works or like who's watching it. Yeah, that can be a thing too. You know, yeah. I'm like okay, this is working but like who are these people and like <laughs> what are what, they, what do exactly do they what, like yeah, about what it? What part of it is because I just, I haven't been strategic in the last year, but I don't know. I feel like I, I, I feel like I fell in love with this artsy fartsy part because I that's kind of got me some success, some success. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now I'm trying to like hone in. Well, it sounds like what, what made you successful just yeah. from what you've been talking about is yeah. you liked it. Yeah. So you're gonna keep making it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I think that that's really really good, right? People can I, sense when you're not passionate. Yeah, yeah. I think that yeah. it, that is a really really good starting engine, right? And mm -hmm. then in, and then what I'm talking about is almost like after the bomb goes off, how do you like pack it back in so that you can really distill like what everyone's there for totally and i mean i've been i 20 percent what's the old saying like 20 percent gives 80 percent of the results yeah, like the, what what that ratio i spend so much time editing and thinking of ideas and racking my brain like if i could just like cut down to the meat and potatoes of like how do i get the most likes in the shortest amount of video with the least amount of effort over and over and over again that's st that i still think is good you yeah know? that's it. the key love it you yeah, know, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> and and that's like it's two separate yeah. parts of your brain because yeah. there's like the analytics part. We have a friend, he's a YouTuber and he's so good at the Genius analytics at part. It. Like it's crazy. where he just he, when it, the thumbnail, the freaking SEO, the, like every little detail that gets you the most amount of wow. watch time in the algorithm and stuff. He's like on it. And yep. his channel blew up, obviously, like that. Sky high, you know, yeah. inevitably. Um, and uh, yeah, he but he's you know, for years he was like creating content that he liked, um, mm. and then he like switched it to like the algorithm content, and his channel blew up. And he, he found a happy medium where he loves the stuff he's doing and now the SEO. But he, I remember him going back and forth, like, well, this stuff I like but doesn't do well, and mm. this stuff does well, but I don't really love it. And now he's like at that middle ground sweet spot. But that when he ran me through the analytics, it's like a lot of stuff to like, dude look at. I hate it so much. I need to hire but once somebody. you get it down, it's like yeah, yeah. Once you get it then, down, then yeah, yeah. Then you it's can easy. start to recognize it. You just start to watch something, and then you go, oh yeah, we should cut it here. We should cut it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just start to know. But it's kind of like learning the technical aspects of poker. Like some people are just like really good at the math and like the and like exactly no where all the bluff away. spots are. They're like yeah. the computers. Mm -hmm. And if you can just balance the two, like all right, I already have the intuitive side down. Like I just really need to study the math part and like get that. Mm. second nature and then then you can start you know balancing it but i think going mm. off the deep end like you did like where you're like let me go all the way on the other side of the spectrum with the art stuff and then like meet it in the middle is like the best way because then i think so yeah and how do you measure success right so like yeah. your metric could be different like there are people out there who do like food reviews mm. and like they've been doing it for five years and they have amassed a huge audience mm -hmm. and that's what they do they go to fast food they go eat through fast food Muffins. and they're like yeah, yeah. They're, and they're like i like it or i don't like it yeah and like and like if that is like something that they love and they're they like doing it that's great but like you could be you know fucking roman polanski and you're watching that and you're like i would this would be my personal hell yeah this yeah, would course. be my nightmare yeah you know? yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's the, what do you, did you, have you thought about like what the end goal is? Or are you kind of just in the fun, like experimental phase and we'll see where it goes? That's kind of the problem too, is I don't really have a necessarily like a dream end goal because I mean, I guess my end goal is to just like have like a bigger channel where I'm not, because right now I make my money from poker. I don't make money from sponsors or from content. Well, it's 
content, but it's like sponsored by a poker site, not yeah. you're like a ads. poker star. Poker stars. And is, is it called an ambassador? Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm not team pro. I'm like an ambassador, I guess. Um, but yeah, I guess the goal would just to be like have a channel that actually can get like real big sponsors and I can support myself on that. Um, and poker can be a side more of a side thing. But um, but yeah, I'm just like torn. I'm just like because I'm like I'm in this place with it now where I'm like, oh, this is like good shit. I don't want to like sacrifice it all. And I'm like so yeah. timid. But yeah, I just need to like let it go and just say fuck it and just do. Yeah. Letting go. And yeah. I mean, that's kind of all you yeah. all you could do in life. To let you go? The, res- the risk. What's step one? Um, I think I just need to like get rid of like all judgment around is this good or is this bad even. And the goal is just literally like it's not even to like make good shit. It's to literally just make shit and then see what. And go by numbers, like turn off the art brain completely and trust that like that's there, the muscle is there and Mm. that'll pick up. Mm -hmm. I am not going to let myself just make complete trash because I have a certain amount of skill at this point and just completely be like robotic almost with it. Mm. Yeah, like mechanical refillable content. It's still your voice, still your sense of humor, Mm -hmm. but it's like refillable they always used that term when we were like oh, really? coming oh, yeah. up with formats like for YouTube like mm. how can you make refillable content that if something's trending you can easily slip it into your content for example I had a cooking show like yeah. I wasn't I didn't know how to cook and the whole thing was like me trying to make a dish and having him taste it at the end and he has to tell me if it's tasty or not uh-huh. and it's called Tasty Tuesday and everybody it's like the same format every time um, I'm picking a recipe I don't know how to do it yet we're gonna see what happens and then he has to taste it at the end and everyone knows what happens like and it gets judged tasty or not um well then if something's trending like uh this is probably a really bad example but like the tide pod thing was trending that's um, a very bad example very, yeah okay the, yes. maybe not use that example well, holidays even <laughs> yeah, yeah like yeah. okay like holidays are are good tent poles where like everybody's doing halloween content so or like what, cakes or yeah like what yeah. halloween con- when halloween recipes can i make right now or like super mm. bowl or the like football season just started what are good like football appetizers to sure. make and see if that works so you get the seo because people are already like searching those things mm. around that time of year Maybe they'll find you but mm. yeah and then they're like well i also cook so i just keep mm. watching that you know um yeah but or like if there's a trend like everyone's doing like the ice bucket challenge maybe we make like an ice slushy d- food thing and you like have that in there i don't know um but that's like an example of refillable content where yeah. you're hitting the algorithm but you're also doing content that you like and it's still your voice and personality something yeah. else that youtube did that i think helped to actually ruin part of why i liked watching youtube mm. was they made the algorithm benefit the most likes the fastest so now videos don't even start until people spend 45 seconds explaining why you got to fucking like the video right and subscribe to the channel uh. and like so youtube created these rules it's not their fault but now guess what guys there's a new package coming to your doorstep every creator tomorrow and you have to make your videos suck a little bit more because mm-hmm. that's how to game the algorithm and everyone just sort of has to participate in that so it's not even their fault mm, but yeah. it just it comes from the top right the top helps to make the other stuff suck more mm. and it's or it, like when you it was based off watch time too like um so if yeah. you had a shorter video which is what traditionally did well on youtube was having like short quick quick sketches like um, yeah so like it counts as a view because it's short so if your video is a minute long and then like it counts as a view and so the high view counts were the what, what was pushing videos up and then youtube was like you know what I'm not gonna be about view counts anymore it's gonna be about watch time so the longer your video is the more the algorithm will push it so everyone's content got stretched even if there wasn't any meat left they would just try to like fill it it so it could get to like seven to ten minutes so that they could get boosted by the algorithm and it was just like ah like i wish that it would let creativity and it would just let it be yeah Yeah. Yeah. decide but but you have to choose you have to it's like do i want to be successful right and still make my videos and be be rewarded by the tube god's algorithm yes or do i want to make my own thing and like be against it but like not ever reap the rewards of being on a platform like youtube it's it sucks they they put you in that box Mm -hmm. so i'm not even blaming creators when i say that 
but it has made videos almost unwatchable now where I'm I'm trying to watch something. And then you got like, these machines of companies that just churn out like SEO yep. algorithmic content. They just like have bots. Yeah. And it's just like <laughs> so people have to sift through all that to get to your video, too, because they've found a way to exploit the the SEO and algorithm. It's a whole I'm like, listening to something. Yeah. I'm in the car. Yeah. I'm like driving, I'm listening to a guy talking, and then all of a sudden I hear a fucking ch click, and I hear a bell, and I'm like, what the fuck is somebody behind? And it's like, oh no, it's on the video, they're saying subscribe, and they put the big subscribe mm -hmm, thing mm -hmm. up here, and then they have you click in the bell, and it's like, yeah. But then again, it's not their fault, that's YouTube, so yeah. it just sucks to have to acquiesce to the rules of the medium, but that is, I guess, the hell that we're all in. That's the hell we're in. But I found that super relatable. I think that a lot of people yeah. out there that are like, you know, I have this thing I love to do, mm. and then I have this thing that I know works and brings me money. Mm. Is there a way to merge them? Do I have to pick one? Mm. Do I have to sacrifice my soul for the money or sacrifice the money for my soul? Like, and it, I've talked to so many people that have been do in that both. boat. Sacrifice yeah. your both. soul, have ad breaks. Yeah, for sure. That's I it. think that like, now that I've got a handle on it i need to just trust that like even if because because the thing is even if you're doing whatever ice bucket challenge or something that's very like trendy whatever you're obviously just still gonna be you yeah it's not gonna, you're not gonna literally just be some intolerable person who does it who's <laughs> yeah. like the worst you're still gonna do your thing and have your little jokes and you'll put your spin on it so but you have to hone that in first yeah and i think i'm there now that's like, great that's, that's a great, great place that's to really be in yeah so We'll see. I'm excited to see like what Thanks. comes next. Can't wait. Definitely subscribe. Uh, what's the is there a channel name yet? Um, Marl's TV. Marl's TV. M -A -R -L -Z. And don't forget to click the bell. Notifications bell. <laughs> that's your but that's your poker channel. Or that's your no Marley Poker is poker, Marley poker and is poker. Marl's TV. It's okay, Marl's TV is is my regular. Okay, yeah. awesome, yeah. exciting. Well, thank you for coming. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you for coming. Bye. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> I know. It's so awkward ending these. I know, stories. right? Well, no. Is there anything else, like? Anything else you want them to go check out? Like, I know that um, Scraggy been... on Twitch.com. Yeah, um, her husband. My husband. Uh, oh, you're moving to to, to England. Soon. Yeah. Yes, I'm so ready to like, be over there. Um, I'll probably stream a little bit, but like I said, I'm not really trying to like, you know. So follow her on Twitch. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Marley Poker. There's so many more TV. options over there. Yeah. For, for poker. Yeah. And this is good. There's good live poker. There's EPTs. Um, and the tournament live tournaments. A European poker talk. How are you going to get your cats there? That's the biggest question. Uh, I have one, one boy here, and he is going to be a very un unhappy camper yeah. on that flight. You take him on the flight, put him in your lap? Uh, under the seat, yeah. Under the seat. He's a big boy, though, so he's going to oh be a little cramped. See, she's a cat lady, too. You have to subscribe. Exactly. Yes, Gotta. please. Yes, Chauncey. Yeah, I post okay. lots of content. Follow him. But on... You have two cats. One's in, in, in London, England. right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And just so funny. Like, honestly, the same type of humor. Dry. <laughs> dark dry Who? uh you know me like us uh, like, yeah. i think i feel like anyone that watches us oh, yeah. would love your stuff i thought you called her andrew yeah i thought you said angela i was like uh, yeah. who's angela i was like i need to enunciate yeah, um i don't I was have like, she's like andrew's so funny i'm like oh who's andrew <laughs> oh and just <laughs> and, is what and i just, said and just so funny. so funny yeah. okay yeah. okay, okay. should well, put some you. pauses in there maybe i went into mumble mode like you i like it i think people are gonna start googling oh who's andrew it's <laughs> a more efficient way to <laughs> <laughs> follow Andrew. Right, yeah, follow Andrew here. TV. Uh, check us out at Patreon, patreon.com slash sticky. Keeps the show alive. Thank you very much. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. Bye. -bye.